Well, hello. This is lesson 1-2, Points, Lines, and Planes. Um, you should have this worksheet in front of you. And we're going to go through and see if we can answer some of these questions here. So the first question that refers to this diagram here, that we have this rectangular prism, says, what do the dotted lines represent? Okay. So we have a dotted line back here and then right here from C to G and right here from C to D. So if that didn't come out very well on your worksheet, those are where the dotted lines are. And what do they represent? Well, they represent lines that if we really had this solid rectangular prism sitting in front of us, unless it was made out of transparent, you know, plastic or something, we wouldn't be able to see those lines. So that's what it represents. It represents lines Okay, writing in cursive is very difficult with this. I'm going to do just printing. That we can't see. And I look like I am in kindergarten and I've just learned to write. But that's what it represents. Lines that we can't see. Okay, and then it says, name each plane. So if we're looking at this prism, how would we name the plane that makes up the front of the prism? And that might be kind of confusing to you because the front of this prism is, is very much defined. It has, a, you know, an edge to it. It ends, right? But the plane, right, that the front of the prism is sitting on actually goes on forever. The prism doesn't go on forever, but the plane that the front of this prism is sitting on, right, or in, goes on forever. So how would we name that plane? Well, to name a plane, you just need any three points because three points define a plane. Okay, so if I look at the front, from E to G to H to F, a lot of students want to say those four letters. F-E-G-H. Well, you, it's not that it's necessarily incorrect, but we only need three of them. So we're only going to use three points to define a plane. And you could pick any three. So I'm going to say H-F-E. You could say F-E-G. You could say G-H-F. So let's just pick three. So I'm going to say H-F-E. And when you see three capital letters like that, because points are, are capital letters, and three of them are together, then you know that that's a plane. Okay, so the back of the prism is back here, A, C, D, B. That's the back, so pick three, right? If we look at the top, we have a lot of choices here, but there are two choices that we can't use, okay? Now if we pick A, I, and E, those are three points, but they're collinear, meaning that they're on the same line. So if I use those three points, I don't know what plane it's referring to. It could refer to the side right here, or it could refer to the top. So I can't use three points that are actually in a straight line. I can't use three collinear points. And therefore, I can't use these three points either, A, J, B, because that could mean the top of the prism here, the plane that would be the top of the prism, or the back. So any other three, right, any other three combinations, you could do F, A, I, you could do E, I, J, just be sure that they're not three points that are in line, okay? For the bottom, any three points here. The bottom would be right across from C to D to H to G. Any three points, capital letters. Okay, so the left side is over here. Any three except not EIA, right? We have a choice of A, I, E, G, and C. Any three of them except for those three that are in a line. Can't use three collinear points to define a plane. Um, 
And for the right side, we have B, F, H, and D here. Pick three of those points, okay? All right, name three collinear points. We just talked about that, right? A, I, E, and A, J, B. Pick three. Okay, so here's one that's very confusing. Our C, H, and A coplanar. Well, when we look at it, we have C, H, and A. And it seems like they're not coplanar. I mean, A and C could be either part of this plane, right to the left, or maybe part of the plane that makes up the back. H could be part of this left plane, or the bottom plane, or the front plane, right? So how could those be coplanar? Well, because there are all kinds of planes in this diagram, and there are planes that aren't drawn. And if we took and sliced, like took a big, uh, think of a metal sheet that you're going to slice, and this is like a cube of cheese, and you're going to slice it diagonally right through A and H and C, and you're going to slice it straight down. So I'm going to kind of draw that. And you're going to slice that like that. That's a plane that would slice right through there, right? There is a plane there. Just because it's not drawn in the diagram doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. There is a plane there. And I knew right away that they had to be coplanar because how do you define a plane? Well, three points define a plane. And C, H, and A are three points, so there is definitely a plane that goes through those three points. So the answer is yes. And boy, that doesn't even look like a yes, does it? All right. Um, name a line segment. Well, between any two points, there's a line segment. So pick any two points and, and write it. Now, I'm going to choose E and I. When I name a line segment, if I do this, if I just write EI, it's not correct. That's not a line segment. What I have just written is a distance. Two capital letters together defines a distance. It defines the distance from E to I. To name the line segment itself, be sure to put the segment symbol over the top, okay? All right. Name two lines. Well, all kinds of lines here. By the way, how about the line that's like from B to G? Any two points to find a line. So there's a possibility. Any two points. Now if I'm going to name a line, I don't want to just write BG because that's a distance. That's the distance from B to G. If I want to name a line, I need to put the little line symbol over the top of it. So I could do any two points, or there's, there's a line defined here with this cursive small letter. I could use that. K. Okay. Boy, I am not happy with how this is writing today, and that's so bad I'm going to erase it. So a cursive K. There we go. All right, and it says, where do planes EGC, so EGC, that's the back, or the left side, right? That's the left side, and CDH. CDH, that's the bottom. Where do they intersect? Where does the left side of the box 